Here's a quick description of some of the changes made to BikeCAD version 7.0. Dimensions can now simply be moved by dragging the number on the screen. Here's a few examples. Angular dimensions work the same. To display a supplementary angle, simply drag the dimension to the other side. For demonstration purposes, if I zoom in, I'll point out that you can attach a dot to the end of a dimension extension line by clicking this icon at the top right corner of your dimensions dialog box. The second icon replaces arrows with dots. The third icon allows you to change the size of your arrows. Here's an exaggerated example. Traditionally, the end of the top tube is pinned according to the 10 millimeter dimension shown here, which as you can see I can change if I like. That number remains constant even as the rest of the frame changes. In version 7, if you like, you can pin the end of the top tube at this 31 millimeter dimension, illustrated by this icon in the primary dimensions dialog box. I can change that now if I like, and as the rest of the frame changes, it's the 40 millimeter dimension that now stays the same. The tubing menu has been enhanced, allowing you to add curved tubes to the seat tube, top tube, and down tube. Tubes can be curved either once or twice. The location of the bend can be defined as a ratio of the overall length of the tube, or as an actual length from the end measured in millimeters. The top tube or down tube can also be turned off with these check boxes and the head tube can now be defined as an arrow head tube or as a variable diameter head tube. We now have a new icon here that allows you to select whether the down tube is mitered to the seat tube or the seat tube is mitered to the down tube. Seat stays and chain stays can now also be curved, and that curve can be in the side view as well as in the auxiliary view. Seat stays can still be curved in the way they used to be by clicking on the wishbone checkbox and selecting raked in this menu. By default, seat stays are symmetric, but with the menu at the top, you can select asymmetric and just curve one of the stays. Alternatively, you could select symmetric double where the left and right side of the stays are taken to be symmetric, but with double you get a second pair of seat stays. This could be used for setting up a mixed type frame. In version 7, when you pick on a color, you can select from swatches, hue saturation and brightness, RGB values, or the advanced tab which allows you to adjust the transparency and or overlay an image on the paint. You can also configure BikeCAD Pro so that certain paint colors will be associated with palettes. In this case we have the RAL color scheme. Alternatively you could make your own palette made up of as many colors as you like, incorporating, if you like, images. With a lot of the paint schemes, we can now adjust aspects of the scheme. For example, with faded paint schemes, we can adjust where the fade occurs by dragging these bars around. In case of the flames paint job, you can also adjust the location of the flame. You have similar controls with the panel paint schemes, and note that you can control each panel independently on each tube. Lug dimensions can also be controlled. You now have independent control over all the logos on the frame. Here I have the dialog box for the seat tube logo up and as you can see you can change the orientation of the letters, you can change the distance from the end of the tube, you can change the width of the letters, the font, can now be previewed in the drop-down menu. Each tube actually has two logos to choose from. As you can see on the right here, most of the tubes have their second logo disabled. However, if in the case of the down tube, I wanted to split my words into two, for example, first logo could say bicycle, I could enable the second logo, it could say forest. With a little playing around, you can achieve an arrangement of logos like you see here. And don't forget, we have all the same advanced 
paint controls that we saw earlier. There we've applied the brush steel image to our logo. These logo options extend to the wheels, forks, and components. With so many logos on the screen, don't forget you still have the ability to turn them all off en masse using decals checkbox. You now have the option to select from standard components. This applies to the handlebar menu, for example, where you can switch to the standard menu and select from an ergo bar, a track bar. Remember that you can always turn off the brake levers, BMX, bullhorn. If we come up with our own design in the custom menu, perhaps a bullhorn like this with a tighter radius, we can add that to our library. Just give it a name, tight bullhorn, for example, save that. That gets added automatically to our list of available handlebars. If we pull in a model, just like this demo bike, for example, that maybe has a handlebar that is not in our library. For example, this one has the Bicycle Forest king size bar. It's not found in the library. Do you wish to add the component to the library at last? If you say OK, that handlebar is now a permanent part of your handlebar library. Let's imagine a scenario where we open a file containing a component by the same name as one in our library, but which has different dimensions than the one in our library. If that's the case, BikeCAD will identify the discrepancies in those dimensions, list them for us, but then ultimately switch to the custom menu. Now that component we read in, called Tight Bullhorn, maybe we would prefer that its dimensions override the specifications of the handlebar by the same name in our current library. You can do that now by just adding the component to the library and calling it by the same name. We will be asked if we want to overwrite the existing file. We'll say yes. Now our library has updated specs for the handlebar called Tight Bullhorn. This ability to save individual components applies to wheels, forks, saddles, headsets. Note that headsets only store information about upper stack height, lower stack height, and some sense of the shape of the headset. While our library may contain various diameters of headsets, the diameter in BikeCAD is just automatically matched to the head tube diameter. Moving on, we can also save cassettes. We have all these standard cassette sizes as well as cranks, which also contain chainring information. Pedals and dropouts can also be saved in the same way. To remove components from your library that you no longer want, you can go to the Customize menu, choose Manage Components and Templates. As you can see, we have all our cranks, forks, handlebars, headsets, etc. And you can select a particular component you want to remove, select Delete, and it will be removed. Templates, which were introduced in version 6.5, are also managed in this interface. In the past, all notes had to have arrows associated with them. Now you can start a note with no arrow. In version 7, it's easier to control the logo displayed in your title block. You can go to View, Customize, and just select a new logo right from the list. If you want to add your own, just click Add and browse for the appropriate image. Next time you launch BikeCAD, that could be your logo. Also in the Customize dialog box, we have an Undo Limit, which can be set here. Another feature of BikeCAD 7 is the Lean Angle. The Lean Angle presents a front view of the bike, tilted, such that the inside pedal, dropped to the lowest point of its stroke, just touches the ground. As you can see, if we make the crank shorter, we get a greater Lean Angle. As always, when you import a photo, you can scale that photo by holding down the control key and dragging your mouse up or down. You can pan it by holding your shift key down and dragging your mouse back and forth. And you can rotate it by holding down your alt key and dragging the mouse up or down. However, an enhancement in version 7.0 is that you can now simply enter angular dimensions, or the scale, or the position, by typing values into the image controls dialog box. 
Ultimately, your goal will be to match it up, something like this. The fit advisor has also been enhanced. We've brought the information from the Rider Anatomy tab into the same dialog box. The Rider Anatomy data is the same as always, but dimensions are associated with this diagram, making it easier to understand what each value is about. There is also an icon controlling the display of the rider, integrated into the dialog box for convenience. The crouch slider is there as well, the hand positions, and sitting position has also been integrated. Miter templates are now saved with a dashed line to represent the inner diameter of the tube. Chain stays and seat stays can now be accounted for even if they're elliptical. The offset of the chain stay is also accounted for in the miter templates and elsewhere. The dialog box configuration button allows you to toggle between three different configurations of dialog box layouts. We also have new translations of BICAD into Arabic, Chinese, French, and Russian.